Ansel is an integrated innovator, manufacturer, and marketer of differentiated products. Ansel's protection capability is only increasing with brand new technologies. We control our source of supply from materials to manufacturing, we manage imports and regulatory approvals, and we work directly with leading distributors and end users. How critical Ansel's protection is to people doing some of the most important and demanding jobs. And we're achieving all of this while continuing to advance our efforts to protect the environment. Hello everyone, welcome back to Ansel Clean Talk, a podcast series where we dive deep into the fascinating world of life sciences and clean rooms. It's Rakesh here, your guide on this journey. If you're joining us for the first time, you've picked a great episode to start with. And if you're a returning listener, we're thrilled to have you back. In our last episode, we discussed the ins and outs of why iron face protection is so vital in maintaining the sterility of our clean room environment. Now today, we are shifting our focus to explore the realm of aseptic processing, another critical aspect of our industry. As we navigate through the best practices outlined in the EU GMP Annex 1, we are eager to shed some light on clean room consumables, and we also have some exciting news to share. Ansel's innovative garment fold technique that enables true aseptic donning. Stay tuned and we'll dive into this later during our discussion. To guide us through this journey, we have two special guests with us today, Patricia Mary Lewis and Michael Haney. Both Patricia and Michael have made significant contributions to the field and we are absolutely delighted to have them on our podcast. A warm welcome to both of you. Thank you, Rakesh. Yes, thank you. Just to give our listeners a little bit of a background on our guest today, Patricia is based in Shahala, Malaysia. With over 15 years in the industry, she's become an expert in medical and PPE products, particularly when it comes to the manufacturing of disposable gloves and garments. She's currently part of Ansel's life sciences team as a product portfolio senior manager. And on the other hand, Michael is based in Southern California, US, and has over 19 years of experience in PPE products within the healthcare and clean room environments. He's currently the Associate Director of Sales for the Life Sciences Western Region. Once again, a big welcome to both of you. And yeah, let's get started. Okay. Michael, uh, to kick things off, could you shed some light on the best practices mentioned in the EU GMP Annex 1 in relation to clean room consumables? Uh, c- certainly. So, uh, the EU Annex 1, specifically in Section 7, it highlights some best practices related to the use of clean room consumables, you know, such as um, face masks, gloves, goggles. It emphasizes that personnel tr- accessing the grade A and B areas should be trained in an aseptic gowning and behavior. This includes the need um, to inspect the entire the attire uh, is free of defects and that it might compromise the, the sterility of working environment. It also stated that these um, apparels must be free of contamination in the forms of fire fibers and particulations. They must be folded and packed in a, in a way that personnel can don them without contacting the outer surface um, of the apparels or allowing them to touch the floor. Gloves should also be regularly disinfected during the operations wherever possible based on their SOPs. Uh, and containment systems such as RABs and isolators should be considered as well. That's very informative, Michael. You mentioned the importance of uh, personnel training Can you expand on why this is such a crucial aspect within the context of EU GMP Annex 1? Sure. Personnel training is crucial in the context of the Annex 1 due to its direct impact on the maintenance of sterile environments within the clean room. The guidelines in Annex 1 outline necessary competencies, uh, behaviors and procedures that the personnel must understand and follow to ensure to prevent the contamination. So this includes the correct use of handling a clean room consumable apparel, um, you know, how to respond to contamination events and the specific requirements for aseptic gowning. In essence, a, a, a person uh, that's trained 
are less late, likely to introduce contaminants into the environment and are more equipped to handle potential contamination incidents effectively, uh, ensuring the integrity of the clean room environment. Patricia, given the significance of personal training, could you share how Ansel is supporting its customer with this? And also, are there any specific initiatives Ansel has put in place to ensure proper training? That's right, Rakesh. Ansel is fully committed to support customers with guided training materials. As indicated in Section 7.4 of the Annex 1, personnel accessing Grade A and B areas should be trained for aseptic gowning and aseptic behaviours. To complement that, Ansel has launched a comprehensive e-learning module the module will cover accurate procedures for gowning and degowning, focusing on protocols needed for a successful aseptic management from head to toe. The module will be accessible for our customers and it will provide them a platform to train and assess their own personnel's understanding and competence. We believe through initiatives like this, we aim to guide customers to not only manage, but to also maintain the highest standard standards of cleanliness and sterility in their clean room environment. Michael, regarding aseptic gowning, can you explain the role of operators in this process? How challenging can it be to implement and what kind of training or reinforcement might be necessary? Sure, sure. So, um, first of all, the Annex 1 does not really provide any protocol on aseptic gowning. Um, it's stated in the document, it is the responsibility basically of the end user of the company to evaluate and validate gowning methods as part of the CCS assessment to maintain the required level of cleanliness and sterility. Um, basically that the company has to have their own SOPs put in place for, um, monitoring and, uh, evaluating, uh, the, the clean room and making sure it's uh, clean and sterile. Having that said, said that, the implementation of the aseptic gowning or donning process can be super challenging. Um, it requires the end user to comply and follow established gowning protocols based on their own SOPs that they've written. Uh, this necessitate, necessitates ongoing training, monitoring and reinforcement. Uh, to ensure that the employee understands the importance of adhering to the gowning protocol and the consequences of non-compliance. Uh, basically, they have to go through through read um, gowning qualification uh, annually to ensure that the, they're qualified to go into the clean room and understand what's going on. Patricia, could you tell us about the steps Ansel has taken to ensure aseptic compliance in its manufacturing process? Yes, this is indeed an important question, Rakesh. As a manufacturer and a leader in clean and sterile consumables, Ansel has always paid close attention to environment management and controls which are validated and monitored. This is to guarantee the cleanliness levels of our products during the manufacturing process in our clean rooms. We also redesigned the way we package the products to enable ease of aseptic handling at the customer end in order to facilitate accuracy in their protocols. Through our sterilization validation program, we are able to provide high level of assurance in the sterility of Ansel's products. Michael, could you elaborate on how the steps Patricia has just mentioned is assisting Ansel's customer in maintaining aseptic environments? Yeah, um, implementing aseptic counting for clean and sterile apparel requires careful planning training and ongoing monitoring to ensure a process is effective and that the personnel are able to comply with the established protocols. Could you also explain why aseptic donning is so important for maintaining an aseptic environment? Yeah, uh, yeah. aseptic uh, consideration and gowning for grade B uh, environments is stipulated, I believe in 7.3 and 7.14 of Annex 1. Um, this is part of the effort in preventing cross-contamination during the gowning process. So like a point of interest include one, the gowning of clean and sterile apparel to enclose all skin surfaces. Um, 
to there should be there really shouldn't be any possibility of releasing contaminants such as particles and fibers or dead skin hairs um, and potential microbial elements as well. Three, the packaging of the clean room and sterile apparel should be taken into consideration. It should be it really should allow the wearer to retrieve and don without contacting the external surface. So at uh, Ansel, you know, our our garments are packed inside and out, uh, which helps eliminate that uh, potential of touching the outside. And then four, uh, the coverall should be gowned in a way that without contacting the outside surface and the coverall should not be allowed to uh, touch the floor. Patricia, could you share the measures Ansel has taken to ensure their products meet the contamination control and sterility standards? Yeah, to assist our customers in meeting the criteria, Ansel offers a wide range of portfolio in clean and sterile products, which includes coveralls, gloves, face masks and goggles to provide a comprehensive head-to-toe solution to support contamination control. From our protective clothing category, we had recently launched the coverall and accessories with a septic fold. While our clean and sterile gloves are cuffed and pair packed to facilitate aseptic donning. In addressing the use of wraps and isolators, Ansel also offers sterile and clean styles. Our multi-layered film packaging considers the aseptic controls needed for product movements from external to the clean room area. Michael. Patricia just mentioned in her response about Ansel's new garment fold. Can you provide more insights into this uh, folding technique? How does this innovation enhance the aseptic donning process? And what support does Ansel offer to ensure its customers can effectively adopt this approach? Yeah, Ansel's clean and sterile products are, are all packed in a way that allow the wearer to retrieve and don without contacting the, the external surface. I kind of mentioned that in my talking points before, but um, our BioClean line, the coveralls, implement aseptic folding that allow the wearer to retrieve the content from the package by touching the inner surfaces only. And our gloves are cupped in a pair packed to facilitate the aseptic handling uh, during that process as well. I would suggest for um, our listeners to enroll in the e-learning modules which consists of video clips on the recommended methods to gown and don clean and sterile apparel. Apart from showing um, gowning methods and mo- the, the modules also include some do's and don'ts in the in the gowning areas. We also include a de-gowning method that uh, emph- emphasizes um, personal safety during the process. And everybody will be informed when the e-learning modules uh, are ready for registration as well. And then for the donning methods, Ansel has prepared a series of video clips with detailed instructions on how to gown gown and don aseptically. Tricia, in the context of EU GMP Annex 1, how are clean room consumables validated for use in grade A and B environments? And what role does Ansel play in this? Okay, Rakesh, I'm going to get a little technical on this question, but I think it's important to understand the related focus sections well. Section 2.3 of Annex 1 states that a contamination control strategy referred as CCS should be implemented to define all the critical control points and formulate the effectiveness of these controls with the objective of establishing assurance of contamination prevention. In the following section of 2.5, one of the elements to be considered under the CCS charter is vendor approval. Section 4.12 Part 2 states that only the materials and equipment entering the grade A and B areas shall be pre-assessed and approved under the framework of CCS, which in this case applies to clean room consumables. This is further substantiated in sections 9.22 to 9.31, which specifically stipulates personnel monitoring for viable particles that fall within the charter of CCS. In summary, end users must consider and determine the type of critical controls when developing the validation protocol. Ansel will collaborate closely with customers in providing required documentation for products which is available in the validation packs. Michael, could you shed some light on Ansel's strategy to maintain the cleanliness and sterility of their clean room consumables? 
and how does this strategy align with the environmental monitoring requirements stated in the Annex 1? Okay, so um, the envi environmental monitoring stipulated in Annex 1 under the framework of contamination control strategy is solely to apply to sterile medicinal manufacturing facilities. Um, in order to ensure the cleanliness and sterility of the clean room consumables supplied to the sterile me medical manufacturer, all our products are pr processed and packaged in clean rooms of ISO class four or five. Uh, and our clean rooms are NEBB certified as per the requirements of ISO 14644 and subject subjected to yearly recertification as well. Patricia, what are the methods of sterilization deployed by Ansel for their products? And how does Ansel determine which methods to use? For protective clothing and gloves, we deploy gamma irradiation as part of our sterilization process. The method of sterilization chosen is determined by several factors, including density, type of material, the level of microbial load, and the intended use of the sterilized item. The validation method that we use to sterilize our products is VDMAX 25 in accordance with ISO 11137 to achieve the sterility assurance level of 10 to the power of minus 6. This means that one out of every 1 million sterilized products may contain a viable microorganism. And Rakesh, this is a very high assurance level. Okay, and what about the clean room coveralls? How are they packaged? And how do we ensure that the sterility is maintained at this point? Yeah, that's a very important question too, Rakesh. To ensure that the coveralls remain sterile from a point of sterilization until the point of use, it is essential to pack them using appropriate packaging materials and techniques. I would like to share some guidelines that we use. So firstly, for packaging materials, it must be produced in a GMP compliant facility under control conditions. We do sample particle count during incoming of materials and trend performance. The packaging material's integrity and physical property is also inspected to ensure that it is free of defects such as puncture and tears, meeting agreed specification. The packaging activities are also conducted in a clean room environment to prevent cross-contamination of the product during the packing process. Coveralls are folded to ensure that the wearer only contacts the inner surface of the coveralls when retrieving the contents from the packaging, while the gloves are cuffed and packed in pairs to enable aseptic donning. To prevent the ingress of microorganisms or other contaminants, the packaging material is vacuum sealed and packed in multiple layers, and the packaging is labeled with important information for traceability. Another important reminder is on storage. The products pack must be stored properly to avoid any exposure that could degrade the product and packaging, which may jeopardize its sterility and barrier integrity. We do indicate this in our technical product sheets. And lastly, Patricia, how do these packaging methods align with the Annex 1 guidelines? If you refer Section 7.13 Part 1 of Annex 1, it clearly outlines the need to ensure sterility of the product, as well as to avoid contact of the external surface during the gowning process. By implementing the guideline which I had mentioned in the previous question, this will assist customers to comply with the guideline stated in Annex 1. Please note that Annex 1 does not provide any specific packaging protocol. It highlights what is needed at the point of use from a contamination control perspective. And if customers have further questions pertaining to the impact of the EU GMP standard, I would recommend them to reach out to their assigned sales representative channels to get further clarification. Ansel is always geared to support this topic as best as possible, Rakesh. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Ansel Clean Talk. I want to extend a massive thank you to our guests, Patricia and Michael, for sharing their insights and expertise with us today. Uh, thank you, Rakesh, for having me. Thank you, Rakesh. I appreciate being invited. Today, we've covered topics from the vital role of personnel training to the importance of aseptic gowning and the exciting new garment fold technique Ansel has developed. I hope you found some valuable insights to take away from our conversation. 
Looking ahead, we are going to dive deep into the world of wraps and isolator gloves in our next episode. This is a topic you definitely don't want to miss. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, please like and subscribe to stay updated with all things Ansel Clean Talk. And feel free to reach out to us with any comments, questions or suggestions. We would love to hear from you. Once again, a massive thank you to our amazing guests and to all the listeners tuning in. Until next time, stay safe, stay protected and keep on learning with Ansel Clean Talk.